Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ here in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, December the 10th. We will sing some songs and praise to our Lord, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that hopefully will be uplifting and uh, edifying to you. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, uh, I will give you the name and the number just in case you don't have that uh, songbook that you can find the song and sing along with us. The first song that we will sing in our book is number 183, Lord of All Being Throned Afar. Lord of All Being Throned Afar. <clears throat> Lord of all being throned afar, thy glory flames from sun and star, center and soul of every sphere, yet to each loving heart how near. Son of our life, thy quickening ray sheds on our path the glow of day. Star of our hope, thy softened light cheers the long watches of the night. Our midnight is thy smile withdrawn. Our noontide is thy gracious dawn. Our rainbow arch thy mercy sign. All save the clouds of sin are thine. Our next song will be found on page 97. 97, the title of this song is I Sing Praises. I Sing Praises, number 97. <clears throat> I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Before we observe the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 354. 354. I gave my life for thee. We will sing the first three verses. The first three verses of number 354. I gave my life for thee. I gave my life for thee, 
my precious blood I shed, that thou my ransom be, and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My Father's house of light, my glory circled throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and long. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I left, I left it all for thee. Hast thou left aught for me? I suffered much for thee, more than the tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? This is the time that we uh, gather about the Lord's table because he gave his life for each one of us. Uh, he uh, allowed his body to be cruelly crucified on the cross of Calvary, and he shed his innocent blood. He suffered for each one of us. He suffered that he would be the perfect sacrifice one time for all, the one perfect sacrifice that we may, within that sacrifice, have the hope for eternal life, have the hope for forgiveness of our sins, have hope of freedom from guilt for our sins, knowing that we can repent of them and that our gracious God will forgive them. And so as we gather about the table, help us to remember the agony that our Savior suffered on the hill of Calvary for the abuse his body took, and that his life-giving blood flowed from him. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful in, in your infinite wisdom that at just the right time you sent Jesus to us. We know that you sent him into a sinful world. It's still a sinful world. And just as those people 2,000 years needed Jesus we still need him today. So we observe this supper to remember the sacrifice. Help us to remember it. Help us to cherish it. Help us to understand what our Lord and Savior went through for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We know that the precious blood of Jesus flowed from his body, from his hands and his feet and from his side, from the corn, thorn of crowns that was on his head. We just uh, remember that blood and understand that the, the blood uh, of an organism represents the life of an organism. And so as his life ebbed from him, as his blood flowed out from his body, we uh, can utilize that blood in understanding that it is the blood that washes away our sins. Let's pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for uh, the blood that fled, that flowed from Jesus' body, the blood of our forgiveness, the blood of our hope for salvation. Bless us as we partake. Help us to do so in realizing that Jesus was indeed the perfect sacrifice one time and for all. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We come to the part of the service that uh, deals with our giving back to the Lord. Giving back to the Lord means that uh, we give him what was his own. The last verse of this song says, I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? We get the chance to bring rich gifts to our Lord through our contribution. And we just pray that uh, those that utilize these monetary gifts will do it in such a way that others will be brought to Christ and that the needy will be served just as uh, we did uh, uh, this past Saturday as we help to feed homeless in Atlantic City. Uh, bless us as we give, knowing that we give you but what is yours. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our God and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the honor that we have to give back to you. We are told to give as we have been prospered. Help us to understand how much we have indeed prospered as we give. Bless us in our giving. Help us to do so with an open heart and open mind, for we know that our Lord loves a cheerful giver. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song is a fantastic song. It is number 873. Uh, as you listen to the lesson, uh, you will perhaps understand why I chose this song. Okay, it's called The Spacious Firmament on High, 873. <clears throat> the spacious firmament on high with all the blue ethereal sky and spangled hands a shining frame there and I'll proclaim the unweary sun from day to day does his creator's power display and publishes to every land the work of an almighty hand Soon as the evening shades prevail, the moon takes up the wondrous tale, and nightly the listening earth repeats the story of her birth. While all the stars that round her turn And all the planets in their turn Confirm the tidings as they roll And spread the truth from pole to pole what though the solemn silence all Move round this dark terrestrial ball What though no radio voice or sound Amid the radiance or be found in reason's ear they all rejoice and utter forth the glorious birth. 
forever singing as they shine. The hand that made us is divine. This concludes our song service. I know the Lord was praised through our singing. I hope you were uplifted. I hope the Lord accepted this as our praise to his great and holy name. If you were in attendance this morning, you heard that the title of the lesson this evening was Consider God's Wonders. Consider God's Wonders. In the book of Job, in Job chapter 37, verse 14, it's near the end of the book of Job. And after all that he has been through and he has been restored, um, he had some questions for God. And through his friend Elihu, um, these words are recorded in Job chapter 37, verse 14. It says, listen to this, O Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Stop and consider God's wonders. It's hard for us to not understand as we drive around, especially in the evening, and we see those Christmas lights up, that it is Christmas season. Um, one of the things that Christmas season reminds us of is the wonder of the birth of Jesus Christ, that he was immaculately conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit and was born that day in Bethlehem in a very, very humble manner. And it, it would be difficult for us to conclude that for many people, uh, Christmas is not only a, a kind of a unique time, a time of giving, but it's perhaps the busiest time of year. Uh, the stores are filled with people going about to those that aren't buying their gifts on Amazon, uh, uh, with people that are buying gifts for one another. Uh, having been blessed with two grandchildren the past seven years, uh, we understand the wonders of our grandchildren and uh, as they have come to understand Christmas and understand that it is a time of giving, uh, they are indeed intrigued and in wonder about the gifts that they receive. However, for us adults, uh, I see a little hang-up here. And that hang-up here is that this season can become so stressful that we can be easily distracted by the wonders that God has shown to us in his creation. Hence, to Job, it is said, stop and consider God's wonders. It emphasizes something that is key to noticing God's wonders. You know what it is? Stopping. It's just stopping. We, we have to be intentional about stopping. It is stopping all those activities long enough to be able to notice the wonders of God. Perhaps the most important being the wonder of God's presence within us. As we just observed the Lord's Supper, we talked about the death of Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that in order for his death to have taken place, that he had to have an origin. And we know that he was there since the beginning of creation. It is up to each one of us to stop and connect with God. And 
I guess to appreciate and to notice God's wonderful presence within us and the inspiring moments that God brings into our lives. If we don't stop, we'll miss it. <laughs> if we don't stop, we'll stay on this merry-go-round of activity. And as we have been on merry-go-rounds before, they just circle and circle and circle, and they don't go to anything that's new. But when we pause, when we pause long enough, when we stop to focus our attention fully on God, our perspective on life, I believe, becomes greater. And we can reflect on the wonders of God's presence in our life. Now, what I am offering this evening, and by the way, it's not Mark offering, it is an offering that all of us have, is an invitation to pause, to reflect, to contemplate, if you will, the wonders of God's word and allow that to resonate deeply within each one of us. It's a, it's a call to step away from the rushing that is our lives, especially perhaps at this season and make time to literally immerse ourselves in that transcendent in those transcendent moments that show us glimpses of God. And so when we're dealing with the stress of whatever, the stress of life, the stress of our jobs, the, the stress of, you know, whatever there may be that will distract us. And we get caught up in the rhythm of the tasks and the responsibilities. And we move from one moment to the next moment without taking the time to pause and reflect. And yet, in the busyness of life, God beckons us. It's a gentle whisper. It's that whisper to Job. Stop and consider God's wonders around us. Now, if we go back to Job, we know that uh, God allowed Satan to test Job. And certainly he was a man who faced a lot of adversities. He lost uh, his family. He lost everything he had. He physically suffered. And yet, he never, ever lost his faith in God. And you know what? You have to know that he wrestled with grief. And a man named Elihu stepped forward, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and directed Job to the wonders of God's creation. And God reflected to Job, have, have you considered, you know, the stars, the moon, the sun, all these things, the mountains that I have created. You know, what we live, unfortunately, in what we might call a fallen world. And in this fallen world, we encounter difficult challenges. And what God invites us to do is stop. He invites us to pause and reach out for him just as Job was encouraged to stop and consider God's wonders. While life rages around us, we need to pause and stop and consider God's wonders. He calls us to do that. God is literally the divine interrupter <laughs> and lets us know there, there are moments that we must shift out of our focus of our temporary condition and look toward God. 
And there are many ways to do that that I think are, are quite enjoyable. One of the most powerful ways is to step outside into God's world. In the first chapter of Romans and verse 20, let's reflect on these words if you have your Bibles or your devices at hand. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. It says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities or invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what he, what has been made so that people are without excuse. We can watch the glory of a sunrise or sunset. We can go on a walk down a nature trail, go to a wildlife refuge. We can stargaze at night, and there's so much more. We can look at the kinds of weather that we have and reflect and look at the diverse natural settings that are before us and, and be in wonder about God, about the qualities of the natural wonders. I step aside for just a minute. Uh, if you don't know this, uh, Wednesday evening, December 13th, is the time of the year for the, the Geminid meteors to flash across the sky. If you have time, <laughs> that's the key. If you can pause and stop and go out on Wednesday evening in the dark, try to find a place that is as secluded as you can get from uh, the, the city lights and look up into the sky. There's a chance that there will be 100 to 150 meteors crossing uh, the sky per hour. And it, it, it's just a wonder to see those. The Geminides only happen once a year, but they are this wonder that flash across the sky, but only if we pause. You know, when we look at our senses, when you see things, you know that God created light. When you hear things, you know that God created sounds. When you are able to touch and taste and smell things, we know that these are gifts from God. God's wonders shine through even the people in our lives. Stop to consider, especially those people that are on the same Christian walk that you were on. And as we go about this Christmas season and see the lights and remember that people are hopefully focusing on what those lights are supposed to be all about, that Jesus is the light of the world. And we've been given all this beauty around us. And there is this transformative power of God's love, of God's grace that forgives our sins and the hope that anchors our souls. So I challenge you this evening, make some regular stops. It's kind of like a, a bus on its route. Uh, the bus is useless unless it makes stops to pick people up and let people off. For us, we are on the bus ride of life. Let's make stops. Let's make frequent pauses and stops to reflect on the wonders that God has before us. Let's pause each day to thank God for these wonders around us, both big and small. With that, let's reflect on the wonder that God at just the right time sent Jesus to us. He sent Jesus into a sinful world. 
And Jesus died for the sins of the world. It is a wonder that we can be freed from the guilt of sin, that we can be forgiven of our sins. And with that, we can find the power to forgive others because that's one of the reasons why the blood flowed from Jesus's body. It was about forgiveness. Let's just pause to take time to look at the awe of God and marvel in the beauty and the wonder of our creation and the vast uh, aspects of our universe. But most importantly, let us understand and take time to pause and understand the integral part that God plays in each of our lives. And let's never forget that. And you know what? It starts when we become children of God. When we become God's children to obedience to God's will, that we can achieve salvation through Jesus Christ, that we may live eternally with our God. The only way we can do that is to obey him into salvation. And so let's pause for just a moment this evening and think about that. If you need to come to Jesus Christ and become one of his children, it is laid out very clearly for us in the scriptures. After we have heard and believed the word, we are con to confess Jesus as the Son of God, repent of our former lives, and be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you have that need this evening, please contact one of us. We will get in touch with you, or we will put you in touch with someone if you're listening from far away, that you might come to Jesus this evening. Let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to take time out of our busy schedules and stop and consider your wonders. Open our hearts and open our minds to the glimpses of you and all that surrounds us, to the beauty in nature, things that perhaps we take for granted. Let's, let's appreciate them on a, a regular basis. Let's remember your wonderful name and let's remember your wonderful son in our lives and help us to remember that we can only come to you through Jesus Christ, that Jesus is our high priest, that he is our mediator and that as we pray to you, we pray to you through Jesus' most holy name and he is the intercessor for us with you. Bless us this evening. Help us to pause. Help us to stop. And as Job was told, stop and consider God's wonders. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, in our daily walk. Help us to do your will. Comfort us when we need comforting. Bless us because we are empty without your blessings. Forgive us of our sins. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.